new in version 21, the free cantilever method or FCM wizard. This is a wizard to speed you through the creation of an analysis model of a post-tension box girder bridge constructed by the balanced cantilever method. It'll create a stage construction analysis and each stage will include the installation of new concrete segments and assuming you use the tendon input pages of the wizard, the installation of tendons that terminate in those segments. And not only the dead load of the structure so far, but also the weight of the next segment being lifted or poured before it's incorporated into the structure. And an allowance for construction devices, cranes, equipment, force work and formwork. The model that's created will include all tendon losses of friction, anchorage, elastic shortening, creep and shrinkage of concrete, and relaxation of tendons. And the deformations in the structure will also include the time dependent effects and so therefore give you deflections that can be used to monitor against site measurements during the construction process. Let's go through the pages of the wizard quickly. Let's get the overview with the straight bridge and we'll maybe come back to have a look at some of the advanced options after that. I've opened Lucis here with an empty model and I go to the bridge menu and choose free cantilever method. On the first page of the wizard, we check our units and we can choose an example bridge and I'm going to use that for speed. Over here, we've got a little illustration of the bridge that's being constructed with the free cantilever method part here and there's a fully staged part at the ends. And up here, we get to choose the sections that we're going to use. And you can see there are already some sections in here. If I want to add a new section, I can choose new, and then I can choose from anything in the library or the parametric sections. And I can, of course, create a new parametric section if I wish, like so. And if I do that, you'll see it appears in my list and can be chosen. So we specify a section for the peer stem, a section for block zero, which is the table section just above the peer, a section for mid-span, we're going to taper between block zero and mid-span. And then a diaphragm section, which allows us to put in, say, a solid section if we want to include the weight, which is incorporated within block zero, in fact. We also need materials for the pier stem and for the main bridge. If you wish to, again, you can choose new. And you'll be able to create a nonlinear concrete material here. It's a creep and shrinkage material without cracking. Of course, we'd be post-tensioning this bridge and so not expecting cracking to be included in the analysis. In the loading section, obviously we'd want to include self-weight. We may well also want to include construction devices, as I mentioned. Here an allowance of 10 tons has been put in and including the weight of the next segment or the wet concrete. This last weight of superimposed loads per unit length is simply added at the end of the analysis to give you the long-term creep of the structure over 100 years. So it would include the surfacing and, and fencing, anything like that. Over on the right-hand side, a couple more settings. Um, curve bridge we'll perhaps come back to later, and also the number of piers, which can obviously be scrolled up and down. And you can choose for your piers to be dissimilar or similar, and you can include a delay, and we'll come back to that one as well later. When I press next, we've got the section here where we input the dimensions for these segments in zone one, and the order of the curve that's tapering the soffit here and the construction period for each segment. So that may be something like a week if you've got an in situ construction, which includes the installation of the rebar and the force work and formwork. It might be much shorter for precast segments which are lifted. But then of course the concrete age at the end of the stage, which would be very different if it's a precast segment already maybe two or three weeks old before it's lifted into place. Similarly, we can enter the height of the pier and the age when that's uh, finished. And for the block zero, it may be a bit longer constructing that first block. We can also enter the key joints, which are pretty much always in situ. And the fully staged parts of the bridge at the end here, we'd need to enter um, some segments, maybe only one segment, and the length of the key. At the bottom here, we've got a few global parameters, if you like. Moving on to the next page, we're into the tendons. This as I've mentioned, already has some tendons in. So if I scroll along to see some more construction stages, you can see those tendons that are being installed. And I can choose to only see the tendons which are installed in this stage. There's the top slab and the web. If I select that row, you can see that I've got some dimensions for this tendon. If I don't understand those dimensions, the help shows us everything we need to see. H1, H2, X1, X2, and R 
small number of dimensions to give you a tendon to go in the top slab or in the web. And we can choose for it to be symmetric. So we've got two tendons for the price of one. We choose a property. If we don't have a property, we can have a new property. It's going to be a standard lucis time dependent loss tendon property. I've used the Euro code, but you can choose from any of the other codes of practice here. And the force, which is a multiple of the ultimate tensile strength, the UTS. So actually one would probably be too high. You'd want to put in 0.6 or 0.7 in most real cases. We can also choose to see the section details and we can see where those tendons lie. And if we choose to see all the tendons, then we can see where all those tendons lie. In the background there, you can see block zero. So that gives you a little bit of scale. Moving on to the next page. Similarly here, we're now looking at mid span. It's not really until the last stage when we see the continuity tendons going in between the two piers. Again, we can look at the section details and the tendons where they lie in each of these segments. And finally, the fully staged method or FSM sections at each end of the bridge, the left hand side and the right hand side, all the same sorts of parameters. And again, you can find help in the same place. Finally, then, we can look at the overview of the construction, which shows us what's being built, when it's being built, where it's being built. That gives us a chance just to check what we're doing before we press the finish button. And when we're finished, we get the whole bridge. There it is. Of course, we're looking at stage one right now. And so it's only the piers which are in place. And if I set active the next stage, you'll see block zero and the stage after that, more blocks being positioned. In fact, I can press that load case advance button and I can see each block going in and the tendons with it. Let's solve this model and have a look at the results. So we can see now that our analysis is solved, we have many stages and many time steps within each stage going on to the long term losses at the end of the analysis. And we can look at any of our normal results. And we can see here the results from that time step 97 time 162 days. And if I just scroll on to the next you'll see how the results update as we go through. Let's go back now, have another look at the wizard and see a couple of those extra options. There's the curved bridge option. If we choose a radius, we can have a radius that bends to the left or to the right, which is measured as you're coming from the X equals zero position and driving across the bridge. You can change the number of piers here and you can choose to have your piers dissimilar. That may be dissimilar in dimensions, but it also may be simply because there's a delay. So let's say pier two is built about a month after pier one and pier three a month after that. When you're entering tendons and you can see now we're looking at a curved bridge. And if we just scroll through some construction stages, you can see how the tendons are now bending to fit the shape of the girder. We only had two piers in our example bridge, and so there are no tendons in pier three, but we can copy all our tendons across from pier one to the other spans, and then we'll see them all appear right here in pier three. Another useful option, which I didn't mention earlier, is this copy button. If I press copy, then I'll get tendon 1203, and I'll get a copy of it just below. That has all the same dimensions. I can choose for it to be symmetric and so on. And I can delete any tendon at any time using that button there. When we've gone through the mid-span tendons and the end tendons, we find ourselves back at this preview stage and we can see the different piers being built in sequence a month apart and then each of them gradually acquiring their segments out of sync with one another until they finally reach the key stages. And that's the FCM Wizard new in version 21.